you very much. All right. Washington, D.C., thank you so much for coming out to the uh, taping for my second stand-up special. Very excited to be here. Uh, before we start the show, I know there's probably some signs up saying uh, no photos and things of that nature, and that's just because obviously we're taping this. And also when I do these shows, people can start taking photos and there'll be a lot of flashing and orange lights up and can be a little distracting when I'm trying to focus on the performance. But what I've realized is that uh, people don't give a shit and they take photos anyway because uh, there are some shitty people that come to these shows. I mean, look how many people are here. Some of you are shitty people. There's no question. If we've met in any other context besides you paying me money to see me tell jokes, I'm sure there's some of you I would hate with a passion. No question about it. I really hate some of you a lot. So what I thought we could do was a compromise. Right now, uh, before I start the show, I understand people like photos and stuff, so right now before we start the show, I'm going to pretend like I'm in the middle of a joke, and you can take as many photos as you want, and then after that, we'll have a great show, okay? Right. So here we go. If you want to snap a photo, go for it. Some fake joke where I need to go through a crawl space. Let's act like uh, let's act like an incident happened with the audience member. Like, sir, could you stand up and act like you're yelling at me about something? So you can show that photo to people and tell them, yeah, at one point in the show, this guy just stood up and was like, whites are the superior race. Aziz was like, whoa, that's not cool, sir. You need to sit down. All right, cool. Everybody good with photos and everything? Thank you so much for coming out. I really appreciate you coming out. Thank you so much. I live, uh, I live in New York right now. And, yes. And uh, I'm single right now. And, oh, shut up. You don't mean that shit. And... Whenever I go out to bars there, I ask one friend of mine. He's one of these guys who's like, oh, man, any cute girl you see, just go talk to her, man. What's going to happen? What's going to happen? What's going to happen? Any cute girl you see, just say something, anything. It doesn't matter what. What's going to happen? What's going to happen? What's going to happen? I'll tell you what's going to happen. That girl is going to be mean as shit to me for no reason at all. Why do I want to deal with that? Hi, how are you? Fuck you! Alright, I'll see you later. I'll go talk to my friend Brian. He's always nice to me. And sure, that's a little bit of an exaggeration, but that is how it feels sometimes. I once went up this girl because I thought she had a cool purse on her shoulder. I said, hey, that's a nice bag. And she said, thank you. And we started talking, and she seemed nice. Then at one point, her friend comes over, and when the girl's friend comes over, she goes, oh, hey, this is Aziz. He came to talk to me because he thought I had a cool bag and rolled her eyes. And I thought, wow, that's really rude. No reason to do that. I was just being nice, right? So I said to myself right there, whenever I leave this conversation, I'm going to make sure this girl knows I don't give a shit about her. And I really like her bag. So at one point, we're sitting there talking, and I was like, yeah, <laughs> hey, what's that over there? And then I stole her purse. Yeah. That bag's mine now. I never know what to say to girls in situations like that. It's always so awkward. I was having lunch with a friend of mine once, and I told him, Hey, there's this one girl that works at this restaurant. She's so cute, but I don't know what to say to her. And he goes, Oh, man, all you got to do is go over in there and be honest with her for a minute. Really? That's all I got to do? So I just need to walk over... Excuse me, miss, I just need to be real honest with you for a minute. I eat here all the time, and when I do, I stare at your face. And I imagine us fucking while I eat my sandwiches. 
Let me know if you'd like to turn my fantasy into your reality. I'm not sure that would work out too well. People always give you the same dumb advice in situations like that. They'll say things like, oh, just leave her a big tip. How does that work? I just walk over, yes, can I get a muffin, please? Here's $100. I think you know what that means. I'm willing to have sex with you for the price of $98. I was doing that joke one night and this guy in the audience just yells, Just tell her you're on TV! Yeah, there's no way I'll sound like a jerk if I do that, right? Excuse me, miss. I'm on TV. <clears throat> I said... I'm on TV. I don't know what's going on here, but this is the part where you start sucking my dick. I guess that's what some dudes think being on TV is like. I just walk into bars. What's up, everybody? Just so you know, someone that's appeared on television is here. So if you're interested in giving me a hand job in the restroom, let's line up to the left. No, that's not how it works at all. How it works is I walk into a bar and five dudes are like, Oh, man, it's that brown guy I saw on that thing. Oh man, oh man, bro, I can't believe you're here. You gotta take a photo with me and my puppy. My puppy's back at my house, though. We gotta drive there now. That doesn't sound safe. I was in a relationship for a few years, and I think in the time I was in the relationship, all dating communication went exclusively to text. You can't call anybody anymore. If you call someone, they're like, what? Are you on fire? Then quit wasting my time. Text me that shit. And I don't like texting people, especially girls. There's always miscommunication that happens. This is a situation I get into all the time. I'll text a girl. She texts me back right away. I text her back right away. She texts me back right away. I text her back right away. She texts me back right away. I text her back right away. She texts me back right away. Then I'll say something like, All right, cool. So you want to get pizza on Tuesday? And then I don't hear anything. And I'm like, what just happened? I know you read that shit. You responded to 20 other things I just said. What, do you not like me anymore? You don't have two seconds to say, yes, I want to get pizza, or no, I don't want to get pizza. Would you check your phone into a locker and go ride a roller coaster for a few hours? What's the deal? And after a few hours of no response, I get real upset. And I just want to send a text that says something like, well, guess who just got uninvited to the pizza party? You did, because I hate you now. Girl always writes something bad. Sorry, I was at my niece's ballet recital. We had to turn off our phones. Whatever, we're done. I finished that pizza hours ago. I went with my friend Brian. He's nice to me. I went out with this girl in L.A. a few times. She was really nice. And last time I was in L.A., I called her up and asked her out for dinner. And she's like, yeah, sure. Then two hours before our date, she calls me up. She goes, Aziz, I really want to go out to dinner with you, but I kind of have a boyfriend now. Is that a problem? And I said, yeah, it's kind of the biggest problem we could have. Why would I go out with you if you kind of have a boyfriend now? What's next? Hey, Aziz, I got you tickets for this carnival, but you can't ride any rides. Is that a problem? <laughs> yeah, it's a problem. I wanted to ride those rides. That's the whole point of me going to the carnival. These tickets you gave me are useless. <laughs> hey, Aziz, I got you a panini press off Amazon, but I shipped it to my friend Lisa instead of you. Is that a problem? <laughs> yeah, it's a problem. That's not my address. And I don't have Lisa's contact info. And now that you mentioned paninis, I really want one. What's the best case scenario? We go out on this amazing dinner date, have a fantastic time, we come back to my place. She's like, Aziz, I had a really good time at dinner tonight, and I want to give you a blowjob, but I'm going to use my boyfriend's penis instead of yours. Is that a problem? <laughs> yeah, it's a problem. Sounds like you're going to suck your boyfriend's dick at my house. It's always kind of depressing to me when I talk to girls that have boyfriends 
because when you ask them how they met their boyfriend, it's never a sweet story like, oh, he was this nice guy and he was doing volunteer work and one day he said something nice to me and gave me a flower and we started going out. No, it's always stories like, I was at the club and this guy came up to me and was like, I've been staring at your ass all night. Is it cool if I take you out sometime? And I was like, yeah. Why would you say yes to that? I don't know. What's the worst that could happen? What's the worst that could happen? He could put something in your drink and rape you. That's the worst that could happen. He could murder you and use your legs to make stilts that look like legs. Another thing that can happen. But that's my problem is I think too much, you know? Go to a bar and watch people. You'll see two different types of guys. There's one type of guy, it's a guy like me. We're usually sitting in the corner talking to each other. Mm -mm, I don't know. Mm -mm, let's just talk to each other tonight, Brian. Then there's a second type of dude, the dumb dudes. They're at the bar, they don't care about anything. They're like, give me a shot of Jägermeister. Drop it in a beer with a bunch of other shit. I'll say anything to anybody. And they go up to some girl, they're like, excuse me, excuse me. Uh, I just wanted to say you look really beautiful tonight. And I was hoping one day I might be able to put my hands on your titties. My name is Kevin. Hi, Kevin. I'm Lisa. Do you want to be my boyfriend for three years? I don't know. Is it okay if I'm really shitty to you and cheat on you whenever I want? Yeah, that's fine. I'll never break up with you. Then they leave together. Meanwhile, I finally get up my courage. Oh, uh, that's a nice jacket. Get the fuck out of my face. And then some Indian dude that recognizes me from the TV will invite me back to his dorm to play video games. Tell me if this ever happens to you guys. You're ever at a party or something like that and you're talking to a guy and you think, wow, this guy is so dumb. This is the dumbest guy I've met maybe all year. What a dumb person. I cannot wait to get out of this conversation with this dumb person. And then they say something like, yeah, and I got two kids. You're like, no! You can't have two kids. You're so stupid. What are you doing raising kids? You're so dumb. You're raising murderers. This happens to me all the time. It's so terrifying. I was talking to a dude at a party. He was 26 years old. He had a three-year-old son. And I was like, wow, that's amazing. Then a few minutes later, I overheard him telling a group of people this story about how a week earlier, he tried to have sex with a bowl of macaroni and cheese. And I said, whoa, 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 whoa. You can't be a father and then fuck a bowl of macaroni and cheese. Once you have a kid, the macaroni and cheese fucking days are over. And he's sitting here telling people the stories like, yeah, and then I put the condom on. And I was like, what'd you put a condom on for? And he's like, I'm not trying to get cheese all over my dick. As if that were a totally reasonable thing to say. As if I was the weird one for even bringing up the question. Yeah, me, the guy, not fucking macaroni. And I told him, you don't understand, in this situation, putting a condom on makes everything way worse. Because that means the whole time he went to go find a box of condoms, open the box of condoms, take the condom out, open the condom wrapper, put the condom on his penis, go back to the macaroni. That whole time, he never once thought, you know what? Maybe I don't need to fuck a bowl of macaroni and cheese. Maybe I can do literally anything else, and it'll be a better use of my time. How are you going to do something like that? when you have a kid. What if his kid saw that? He'd never be able to tell that kid anything. Hey son, be nice to people, do good in school. Really? I saw you fuck a bowl of macaroni and cheese. So why would I take your advice? By the way, I'm three years old, my language skills are very impressive, maybe I should just ride this shit out on my own. I have uh, internet access right now because things are going pretty well and I'm sure some of you guys are online as well and 
I like the internet, but it's very annoying sometimes. Like, does this situation happen to you? You're sitting at your computer, working on something really important, and then you just think, man, I wonder if Home Alone 2 made more money than Home Alone 1. I gotta look into this now. Sorry, important work, something more pressing has come up. I do stuff like that all the time. And what's so annoying is once I start looking into one thing, I'll see something else I want to research. For example, in the Home Alone situation, I'll be looking at that and I'll say, oh wow, Joe Pesci's in that movie. I don't know much about Joe Pesci. Maybe I should learn everything about Joe Pesci. And then I'll spend hours doing all this Joe Pesci research and now I know so much about Joe Pesci. But it's useless information, it's never gonna help me. I never heard of a situation where a guy's been in an alley with a dude with a knife just like, you're gonna die tonight. Unless you could tell me the name of the album Joe Pesci put out when he was a little kid. Little Joe sure can sing. Damn it, you're free to go. How come so many people know that? I gotta stop integrating Joe Pesci trivia into my murders. People know more about him than I anticipated. I always waste time like that. The other night, I was up late. I remembered I'd never seen any of those Saw movies before. They're not supposed to be particularly good movies, but a friend of mine told me, Aziz, you gotta watch Saw 1. The twist at the end of Saw 1 is crazy. And I love twists at the end of movies. So I went on YouTube and I typed Saw ending. Sure enough, the clip comes up. I know what you're thinking, uh, Aziz, you didn't see the rest of the movie, the clip won't make any sense. Don't worry, I'm not stupid. First, I went on the Saw Wikipedia page, and I read the plot summary. And when I got to the last paragraph, I stopped. Then I went back and watched that video, and let me tell you, I did not see that coming. Someone recently sent me a password to one of those online porn sites, and the password worked. And I don't know if anyone here's ever had membership access to any of those sites, but it is incredible. If you're kind of on the fence, like, I don't know, it just doesn't seem like it would be worth it to spend it, do it. Now, the trend in these sites is they try to make it seem like this stuff all really happened. Like, this is real life. These aren't actors. This stuff really happened. So they have dumb names like reallifedickparty.com. And the videos are all the same. These guys go up to some girls like, excuse me, uh, you girls want to come back to our place and have a dick party? And the girls are always like, uh, yeah! And they get in their car, they drive back to the house, they have sex, they film it, and it goes, reallifedickparty.com. Does anyone think those clips are real? They want people to think it's real. Every now and then, they should have a clip where some guys go up to some girls like, excuse me, uh, you girls want to come back to our place and have a dick party? And the girl's like, what? That's disgusting. Get out of here, you asshole. Reallifedickparty.com. Then you're at home like, man, I guess it is real. Those girls didn't want to have a dick party at all. They just continued on to Whole Foods. Now, the first video I watched on the site, these guys go into a donut shop, right? And they're talking to the girls at the donut shop. They're like, uh, hey, so what do you think of us maybe giving you some money and then we can hook up in the back of the donut shop? And the girl's like, okay, that sounds good. She was not a very good actress. So they go in the back and they start hooking up. So there's a guy hooking up with the girl in the back of a donut shop. Now this guy eventually does what any reasonable person would do in that situation and he puts a donut around his dick. Now the woman is performing fellatio type services and she's getting dangerously close to this donut. And then at one point, she just, um, takes a bite of the donut. And I don't know why, but as soon as that happened, I just went, whoa, that was awesome. What an amazing choice by that actress. I wonder if that was improvised, like the donut was just there, just like, um, and the director's like. What is that 
that say about me as a person that I got so excited? I guess I just like food too much. It's a good thing I don't write the scripts for those videos. I'm not scared to be like, all right, so you pick this girl up in Los Angeles, and you drop her off at this restaurant called Animal, and she orders the hamachi tostada, the poutine, the rabbit legs, and the strawberry pound cake. And they bring her everything, and she's like, oh my god, this looks so good. And she eats everything. There's not a bite left. And she's like, wow, that was delicious. Maybe the best meal I've had all year. RealLifeDickParty.com You know what's weird about that donut video is they filmed it in a real donut shop. Which means they had to pay a donut shop owner to use that as a location. But I guess if you're a donut shop owner, the risk is pretty low. What are the chances of someone at home watching the video and going, Oh no, that's where I get my donuts from! That's what goes on back there! I just thought they were putting chocolate and jelly in some of the donuts! But that's got to be happening to some dude. They film all these videos in the same town, I imagine. There's got to be some dude waking up every morning like, Oh, no, not the bank, too. I'm supposed to make a deposit today. And there's jizz everywhere. I always thought the best thing that could happen in the donut video is the girl takes a bite of the donut, and then she starts walking away. And the guy's like, hey, where are you going? She's like, I wasn't trying to suck your dick. I just wanted a bite of that donut. That looked delicious. Bob's Donuts, the best donuts in town. We won't make you suck a dick for years. I was doing a show one night, and they had a woman signing my entire act to the left of the stage. And whenever I got to that pun sign where I said, jeez, everywhere she went like this and it was amazing I said jizz everywhere a few more times just to make sure I understood what was going on because that had to be an on the fly sign for jizz everywhere so he's like okay there's jizz uh oh it's everywhere because everywhere can be You'd look crazy every time you had to sign everywhere. Hey, I'm new in town. Is there a Jimmy John's nearby? Oh, those are everywhere. There's a Jimmy John's here, 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 and here. That's got to be custom for jizz. Jizz everywhere. The ceiling, the carpet, the walls, the plates, the Tupperware, the television. I don't know what happened, but it's everywhere, and I'm really sorry about it. I also love that jizz is just meep, that's jizz. Me. No more thought went into that. Guy's up late developing sign language. Ugh, guys, I'm really tired. Can we pick up tomorrow? I'm really beat. I really need some sleep. A few more words? Fine. What's the next word? Jizz? That's jizz. What if it's everywhere? That's jizz everywhere. How come I get all the dirty words? Brian got puppy. I got jizz everywhere. And the only reason I bring this up is, you know, it could be days from now, weeks from now, months from now, years from now. But one day, one of you guys could be walking around and see a deaf person about to walk into a room where there's jizz everywhere. And he'd be like... And they'll be like... Phew. And they'll head somewhere else, free of jizz. from South Carolina and thank you and whenever I tell people that they're always like oh, oh no but it's so racist there and your skin is brown how did you survive and sure certain parts of South Carolina can be pretty racist more racist than other parts of the country but what these people forget is that the food there is delicious. So growing up in South Carolina, it's kind of like, oh, did that guy just say the N-word? Ooh, fried chicken and biscuits, never mind. Nom, yum, 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 yum. 
Even if right now some dude stood up and was like, hey, I'm going to say a bunch of racist stuff, but afterwards I'll give you a biscuit. I'd be like, that's a weird deal, but I'll take it. Because I hate racism, but I love a good biscuit. I just think it's a little silly when sometimes people act as if all the really crazy racism is just in places like South Carolina, Alabama, Mississippi, or whatever, because I've seen crazy racist stuff happen everywhere. I have a friend in L.A. He's Korean, right? And he got locked out of his apartment. So he called a locksmith, okay? And the locksmith's getting all his info. He's like, what's your last name? And he's like, Chun. The guy goes, what kind of last name is that? The guy goes, uh, Korean-American? And the guy goes, I hate Korean-Americans. Korean-Americans are trying to destroy America. And he hung up on him. Wouldn't unlock his door. And I thought, wow. So this locksmith does no business with Korean-Americans. But I wondered how many Korean-Americans would have to call him before economically he couldn't afford to be that racist. Like, what if Korean people just kept calling him? Would he eventually be like, damn it, man, I would have made $5,000 yesterday if I didn't hate Korean people. This is so stupid. Korean Americans aren't trying to destroy America. They can't even find their keys. But then, weirdly, that stereotype would get integrated into his racism. Like, he would see Korean people and he'd be like, let me guess, can't find your keys? Ching chong, bing bong, where's my keys? He sees a Korean dude opening a door, he's like, ha, there's something you don't see every day. Korean dude actually had his keys for once. Nah, 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 where's my keys? Nah, 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 they're in your house. Now, obviously, I don't like it when people are racist, but I am weirdly fascinated by racial slurs. Like Ching Chong Bing Bong. How did we all know that? As soon as I said Ching Chong Bing Bong, everyone was like, yep, racist term for Asian people. I'm on board. No one was lost. How are racist things like that so ubiquitous? At one point, do our parents sit us down? Hey, by the way, the racist thing for Asian people is Ching Chong Bing Bong. Don't ever say it to them. Well, if they say something racist to you, I don't know. I gotta get out of here. Don't touch that macaroni. One day, I decided to do some research on racial slurs and see if I could learn anything. And I found a very interesting article. It was titled, List of Every Ethnic Slur. And it was 21 pages long. And I read all of them. And if it's cool with you guys, I'd now like to share a few of my favorites. Now, these are racial slurs, ethnic slurs, okay? So they're offensive. They're offensive by their very nature. So if I say one or I describe one and you're offended, there's no reason to be like, Because we all know they're offensive. So instead, you can shut your fucking mouth. <laughs> at the same time, though, at the same time, I don't want to do this bit and look at the audience and see some guy just like, Yeah! <laughs> because that would be terrifying on the other end of the spectrum. So here we go, my favorite racial slurs. Okay? The first one... It's defined as a derogatory descriptive phrase for a person of predominantly Caucasian ancestry with real or suspected distant Asian or African ancestry. Now this is a pretty specific situation to need to bust out a racial slur, but uh, if you ever caught in a jam, all you gotta say is, you know what man? You got a touch of the tar brush. Yeah, you heard me. You got a touch of the tar brush. This is the tar brush. This is you. Boop. You don't think I see that distant Asian ancestry in your predominantly Caucasian face? Some of the racial slurs uh, contained 
other racial slurs within themselves. They were combinations, which seemed very inconvenient to me. For example, there was one for Native American people, Prairie N-word. Prairie N-word, whenever I hear that, I imagine this scenario. Some guy's talking to a Native American dude. Get out of here, Prairie N-word. Some black guy's like, what'd you say? Dude, I said Prairie, this doesn't concern you. Step off. But a lot of times you uh, read the racial slur and it's like, what? What ethnicity is that for? Who would you say that to? I, See if you can guess one. See if you can guess this one. Dogen. It's Irish Catholic. See, no one could guess it. See if you can guess this one. Christ killer. Anyone have a guess on that one? Christ killer. Who would you say that to? Christ killer. Killer of Christ. Did someone say Jewish people? No. It's actually for Asian people. It's used by people that hate Asians so much, they blame them for the death of Christ. Christ killer? But I'm Asian. I know. Why do you think God created locks? Ching chong, bing bong, you killed Christ. But what I learned reading that list, though, was I think you can make anything sound racist or hateful with light right tone in your voice the right inflection you can make anything sound hateful like let me see if i can create a racial slur right now like uh sir you sitting right there uh what is your ethnicity where are you from shut up kit kat <laughs> quit laughing kit kat see that started to sound real racist because you're thinking whoa whoa that guy's not a Kit Kat. He's a person. Aziz must be implying he's brown on the outside, wafer-like on the inside. I've been having fun doing this tour. Uh, when I started the tour, I was reading this Motley Crue autobiography. And it was really interesting. Um, I quickly learned that Motley Crue tours way crazier than an Aziz tour. Uh, it's fascinating because these guys were at one point the biggest band in the world, performing at arenas and stuff, but at the same time they were doing massive amounts of cocaine and heroin all the time, and my body just could not take anything like that. Even if just tonight, I was like, let's do heroin, the next day it'd be like, Aziz is dead! Yeah, he did heroin once and he died. How much heroin did he do? None, he just had a needle in his arm and felt woozy and fell off a building. They have all these insane stories about girls. Like at one point, they're having sex with all these groupies, right? But they had girlfriends at home. So at the end of the night, to cover their tracks, they would put their penises inside burritos. How did that become the plan? Was a Motley Crue guy just running around? Oh my god, my dick smells like all these other vaginas. My girlfriend's gonna bite and I'm cheating on her. What am I gonna do? What am I gonna do? What am I gonna do? Can I wash my dick with soap and water? No, that won't work. Why? I don't know. Quick, give me that burrito. <laughs> it's perfect. The scent of Pico de Gallo will totally throw off my girlfriend. That story is the quintessential difference between a comedy tour and a rock tour. Rock tour, some dude's fucking a burrito, it's like, yeah, man, gotta get the smell of all these other pajamas off my dick. Comedy tour, it's like, <laughs> I'm so alone. I like touring, the only thing I don't like is the actual travel itself, because people can be so rude when you're traveling. The rudest person I've ever met in my entire life is the Eastern European customs lady at the Toronto airport. What's that lady's problem? Why she gotta be so rude? Customs people are the first people you meet when you go to a new country. They should be nice, welcoming. This lady, as soon as you walk out, she just goes, What you are doing here? And I was like, uh, I'm shooting a movie? She goes, What did mean shooting movie? It's like, you know, like filming a movie? She goes, I know what it means filming a movie. I mean, are you doing the lights? Are you acting? Are you directing? I could do without your sarcasm. 
I was like, why are you being so mean? I said something, and you went, what did you shoot the movie? So I just assumed you're kind of dumb, and I'm trying to explain things to you. I'm stunned you know what the word sarcasm means. Your English is slightly better than Animal from the Muppet Babies. And you're yelling at me like a psychopath. And I got my stamp, and I walked on. But I kind of wish after I got the stamp, I turned around, and I was like, Guess what? I lied. And then pulled out a DVD of Jurassic Park and a handgun. Was like, this is what that mean shooting movie. Bang, 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 bang. Passengers can also be rude to you also. I was flying home once and I was sitting next to this couple. They had these two puppies that they put under the seats in front of us. Uh, there was an older couple sitting there, and they said, Hey, uh, you guys mind moving the puppies over a little bit so we can put our jackets under there? And the lady with the puppies is like, Uh, no. We have two puppies. They need all the room. Thank you very much. And I was like, Whoa, why'd you need to be so rude about that? And then she started talking to her husband. She's like, Ugh, Can you believe those people asking us to move the puppies for their jackets? What kind of nerves they have? Who do they think they are? And I was like, I fucking hate this lady. So I started chiming in. I was like, yeah, I heard that. I couldn't believe they'd ask something like that. Those people are awful. Those people are terrible. Those people deserve to be murdered. And I didn't say another word the whole flight. And then the flight lands. And the old couple gets up. They leave the plane. Now the young couple's about to get up. But I hold them down, and I go, no, no, I got this. And I step over them, and I start following the old people, right? The young couple's behind me. We get outside the airport. I pull out the gun that I had from the previous joke. Load in two bullets. I aim it at the old people. But then I spin around, and I aim it at the puppies. Bang, bang! I shoot both those puppies in the face. And I go, never be rude to the elderly again. Have fun bearing your dead puppies. I know what some of you are thinking. Oh no, why the puppies get shot? The puppies didn't do anything. I didn't really shoot any puppies. You're being stupid. I have met some really interesting people on tour. One of my favorite people that I met was uh, this gentleman who once picked me up from the airport and drove me to the venue. And I was talking to this guy, and uh, I was like, what did you do before uh, you were a driver? And he goes, I uh, used to be a celebrity bodyguard. I was like, whoa, who's your bodyguard for? It's like, you name it. Bruce Willis, Miley Cyrus, Jonas Brothers. I'm like, whoa, out of all the people you bodyguarded for, who was the toughest person to do security for? Who had the craziest fans? He goes, toughest person to do security for? Share. Craziest fans? Pauly Shore. And I was like, what? Those are both wrong answers. I can do security for Pauly Shore. Hey, man, can you leave Pauly Shore alone? Thanks. All right, Pauly, let's go. Those two guys are gone. And then I asked him, I said, what did you do before you were a celebrity bodyguard? He goes, you used to drive Madonna's tour bus. I said, how was that? Not fun. I said, why? He goes, because every time I drove the bus, one of her dancers put his dick on my shoulder. <laughs> that was not what I was expecting him to say. So I said, sir, you're going to have to elaborate. And he told me the story, and basically any time he was driving the bus, at one point, one of Madonna's dancers would just come up and <laughs> throw a dick on his shoulder. And this happened so many times, he had to quit his job and get into a new profession. But I guess that would make you quit any job. You could be a lawyer. People would go, hey man, weren't you a lawyer? Yeah, I was. To this new partner joined the farm. And every time I presented a case, he put his dick on my shoulder. So now I work at Quiznos. 
even if your job was just staring at a dick on your left shoulder for three hours a day, if at some point another guy came and put his dick on your right shoulder, you'd be like, whoa, 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 what the fuck is this? I never signed up for that. I said one dick on the left shoulder for three hours a day. Look at the dick shoulder contract we signed, man. The language is very specific. Dicks can't just stop popping up on my knees, elbows, and toes now. We have a deal. You know what? That's fine. If this is how you guys run things, I quit. I'm Pauly Shore, I don't need this shit. Right now I wanted to take uh, a couple of minutes to update you on one of my favorite people in the world, and that's my chubby little cousin Harris. <laughs> Harris is a little cousin of mine that lives in Georgia, and, you know, I don't have any kids or anything like that, so I feel like I should update you on what he's been up to. Uh, Harris is a weird kid. He, uh, you know, I don't get to spend a ton of time with him, but I do check up on him regularly on his Facebook page and read his status updates. He recently had a quote up there, and the quote said, Life's a dirty game. You've got to play dirty to win it. Dash Harris. He's quoting himself on this one. Yep, that's a Harris original. That's not from season four of The Wire. That's from a chubby kid named Harris who once told me his favorite food is Hot Pockets. What a dark thing to say. Life's a dirty game. You gotta play dirty to win it. When does Harris play dirty in life? I can only think of one instance. It's when he's playing Halo. Because as soon as the board starts, he always knows where the rocket launchers are and he grabs them and starts blowing everybody up. It's fucked up. He does this shit every time. That's why I don't play Halo with him anymore. Now, I'm sure there's some people here that have never played Halo and that doesn't make any sense. So I will give you an analogy, okay? It would be as if you were playing Monopoly, right? And um, someone rolled a 10 and landed on Park Place. And then Harris came in with a rocket launcher and blew everybody up. <laughs> Last time I spoke with Harris, I said, what's been going on? And he said, I'm applying for college. Is there any way you can help me with my college essays? And I was like, yes. Because you're a weirdo, and whatever you're going to write is going to be insane. So I can read it to people in public, and it'll help me with my job. <laughs> so I brought along a copy of his essay. And this is 100% real. The essay is titled, All the Small Things. Take the thumb. Even though it is just another finger, it is the most essential. It controls everything from eating and drinking to writing. Interestingly enough, I have found many things in life to be the same way. Already the essay makes no sense. When's the last time something interesting in your life happened you thought, this reminds me of my thumb? Never. He goes on. It's always the simple things that have the greatest impact. The splitting of an atom caused the death of over 200,000 people. Redbox turned the movie industry upside down with the simple notion of creating vending machines that sold movies. Yeah, those two things are comparable. 200,000 people are dead. And you can rent Mrs. Doubtfire for a dollar at the grocery store now. He goes on to describe a particularly uh, interesting summer where he volunteered at a local hospital. This is how he described that experience. I was a human wheelbarrow. And let me tell you, it sucked. You can't say it sucked in a college essay. When you use language like that, you know what it sucks means? You're referring to sucking dick. So what Harris just said is like, uh, hey, university, you know what volunteering and helping people remind me of? 
putting a penis in my mouth and sucking it till it comes in my chubby little cheeks. Later on, he talks about a particularly crazy day at the hospital. A week after I started, the incident occurred. When I set foot in the hospital that day, it was more crowded than ever. There weren't any nurses asking me if I wanted cookies. That's his gauge of how crazy things are at the hospital? Why isn't anyone asking me if I want cookies? A lot of people must have cancer. But what happened that day was Harris ended up meeting a gentleman who was illiterate. And he'd never met anyone illiterate before. And this really affected him. He described how he felt when he drove home that day. I remember thinking how bizarre it was that someone could not read. What if I couldn't read? I wouldn't be able to text my friends movie times or even order cheese biscuits from Red Lobster. These are the things that come to Harris's mind when he imagines a world where he can't read. First of all, you could easily do both those things if you couldn't read. I don't think illiterate people see movie posters and numbers that are like, no clue what that means. Can't piece that together. Now the Red Lobster thing is weird also, because I don't know how many of you all have been to Red Lobster, but if you've been there, you know no one orders the cheese biscuits. Those are complimentary. They just sit them down on your table as soon as you get there. So what's Harris talking about? I'm guessing this is what happens. He finishes his biscuits, and he sees on the menu it says, if you finish your biscuits, feel free to order more. And he's like, thank God I can read. More biscuits, please! So I told him, I said, Harris, you can't send this essay. It's too crazy. Let me do a rewrite. I did a rewrite, which he rejected, but I'll share with you now. I once volunteered at a hospital. It sucked dick, but I did get to eat free cookies. And let me tell you, I will suck dick for cookies. One day, I met a man who was illiterate. It really affected me. It made me realize the world is full of great tragedies. 9-11, the time I overcooked that Hot Pocket. And here, this man, he couldn't read. How would he find a box of Bagel Bites at the grocery store? Even if he found the box of Bagel Bites, how would he read the directions to cook the Bagel Bites? Have you ever eaten frozen Bagel Bites? I ate six of them one day, and it was disgusting. My name is Harris. I hope you consider accepting me into your university. By the way, during registration, will there be free cookies or will I need to suck someone's dick? Life's a dirty game. You gotta play dirty to win it. I used to, uh, I used to kid Harris for being chubby, but he's actually not chubby anymore. He had a gross perk. He's stretched out. He's fine. But a few months ago, I was actually worried that I was getting chubby. I saw a photo of me on the internet, and in the comments, someone wrote, Whoa, who ate Aziz Ansari? Which, hold on, doesn't make any sense. If someone ate me, they wouldn't assume my form all of a sudden. Why do you look like that? I just ate him! But the person was right. I gained 12 pounds. So I started exercising the gym, lost the weight right away. But I didn't always like the stuff the people at the gym would tell me. They would say things like, hey, Z's, you see this new study on Yahoo News? It says any food you eat after 11 o'clock goes straight to your belly. You should cut out those late night snacks. And I would always want to say, oh, really? There's this other study I heard about that says uh, if you have a lot of alcohol in your system and you eat a quesadilla at 3 in the morning, it's delicious. Yeah, I did that study last night, twice.
But I love food. I love going out to eat at restaurants and stuff. It's really something I like a lot. I was eating at one of my favorite restaurants in New York not too long ago, and I was having dinner with a friend. He's like, Aziz, what have you been up to? And I said, shut up. 50 Cent is sitting over there, and I need to hear everything he says. And 50 Cent did not disappoint. 50 Cent, the rapper, ordered a grapefruit soda. The waiter brings him a grapefruit soda. And then 50 Cent said the greatest thing anyone could ever say when they see a grapefruit soda. He looks at the waiter and he goes, Why isn't this purple? <laughs> and it took me a few seconds. And then I realized, oh my god, 50 Cent has no idea what a grapefruit is. Excuse me, everybody in the restaurant, shut up! A waiter's about to explain to a grown man what a grapefruit is. You realize how amazing this is? There are parents that aren't there when their children learn what a grapefruit is. I am there for that moment in rapper 50 Cent's life. This guy leaves the restaurant, he's gonna know about a new fruit. And the exchange was just glorious. The waiter struggling to explain the concept of a grapefruit to a man who just didn't get it. He was like, no, you don't understand. They're two different things. Great, grapefruit, great, grapefruit. I know grapes are fruits. Why do you keep saying it like that? No, it's just one word, grapefruit. You know, it's just one, it's a different, I get it. Grapefruit, apple fruit, orange fruit, carrot vegetable. No, that's not it at all. And it just blew my mind. How does 50 Cent not know what a grapefruit is? This guy's been rich for so long. He has to run to a grapefruit every now and then. I do okay. I see grapefruits every fucking day. What happens when he sees a grapefruit? Is he just like... What's up with those oranges? They're all red and shit. And they're big as fuck. They're looking at me wearing shoes. Those niggas. <laughs> when you do this kind of work, a lot of people write stuff about you on the internet. And sometimes people write mean things. And the smart thing to do is just ignore that. But sometimes I would argue with people. Because I like arguing, and I would do that every now and then, but I recently put an end to all of it. And I wanted to share with you guys what happened the last time I got into an argument online. It started when my email wasn't working. So I went on my website, and I wrote, If Gmail even messes up a little bit, I get upset. It's a little unreasonable, but seriously, send my email, Gmail. And then a guy writes back and says, Dude. You're complaining about a free email service? Maybe use some of your Hollywood money to buy a real email account. Turd. Which seemed a little aggressive. So I wrote him back and said, Hey, man, I was joking and even said it's unreasonable. So go fuck a bucket of dog shit. And he goes, oh, sorry, didn't mean to suggest you should use a little of that money you have instead of crying like a bitch. At this point, I decided to take things up a notch. I said, I hope four hippopotamuses force you to blow them and they all come on your face simultaneously and you choke on hippo cum and die. Because that would probably be a pretty rough way to go. Um, imagine you're just at your house, like, making eggs or something. Ding dong. Oh, a hippo was here. Four hippos. Well, what do you guys need? And the hippos are just like, suck our dicks. Even logistically, this is going to be rough. I mean, you got four hippos lined up to your house. You got to blow them at the same time. Oh. And eventually the hippos are like, we're about to come. Because that's what talking hippos do in that situation. And then it starts. He's like, ah, oh no, oh no, oh no, I'm choking. I'm not going to make it. I'm going to die. I'm going to die. I need to email my family and tell them I love them. Fuck, Gmail's down. That guy was right. <laughs> So, I wrote 
borrowed that up there, and then he responded and said, here's a tip, don't use the word seriously when you're joking. Want to come down to SD and talk that big boy talk face to face? I'm assuming SD stands for South Dakota, which doesn't intimidate me at all. I will go to South Dakota and fuck somebody up. Not for real, because I'm small, but I'll say shit like that when I'm online. So I kind of want to end this argument, so I tell him, look, you're the only one of thousands who have this impression of me. Maybe you should just look up sarcasm in the dictionary. And he goes, you can't tell sarcasm through text, Akbar, but nice try. And I said, well, that's strange, because everyone who didn't have the veiny shaft of a huge hippo cock deep in their throat could. Keith, yeah, I called you Keith, a random white guy name. Just like you cleverly did to me with Akbar. By the way, the previous use of the word cleverly was sarcastic. Could you tell it by reading it, you dumb piece of shit? And then he wrote back and said, whatever, you chawa. And I didn't know what that meant. I had to look it up. That's a sign of terribly ineffective racism. You can't say something racist to someone and go, hey, what'd you say? Spell that for me. I need to look that up. It's got to be immediate. But I looked it up, and apparently Jawa is some Star Wars character that's, like, small and wears a hood and is brown and yellow eyes. I don't know. It doesn't offend me. But I love the idea of a guy that's really racist and really into Star Wars. That is an amazing combination. I would love to hang out with that dude for a while. I would go to the movies with him whenever I could because... At one point, I feel like he would stand up and he'd say something like, Damn it, I can't hear the movie because all these Darth Vader's will shut the fuck up! <laughs> so, at this point, I don't have time for this guy. I'm a busy guy. I've got Joe Pesci research piling up. And I tell him, look, I don't have time to argue with a guy who's integrating racism and Star Wars trivia. And he goes, this used to be an argument four hours ago. I just wanted to see some D-less idiot get all worked up over his tiny pecker. And I said, well, every pecker must seem tiny after all the huge hippo cops you've had in your mouth. Go suck more of them. You got a touch of the tar brush. I've had a really fun year this year. I, I had a really fun New Year's, but it was also one of the most embarrassing, humiliating, terrifying moments of my recent life. I went to a Jay-Z concert in Las Vegas for New Year's, which was, uh, yes, is uh, is a lot of fun. And uh, after the show, they had an after party for everyone that went to the concert, and it was a lot of fun. Everyone's hanging out. Then at one point, Jay-Z came out behind the DJ booth and was rapping along with all the songs and everyone was going crazy and having a good time. And Jay-Z brought the music down and he started talking to the crowd. And he was like, uh, hey everybody, just wanted to wish everybody a happy new year. It's a really special night tonight. We got a lot of great people in the building tonight. We got me, Jay-Z in the building. We got Beyonce in the building. We got Rihanna in the building. And I looked at my friend Alan and I was like, we got Aziz in the building. And then Jay-Z goes, we got Aziz in the building. And I was like, oh shit, I'm in the building. I had no idea I was in the building. I've never been a part of building announcements before. No one's ever excited about me being in a building. It's never like, Aziz is in the building. It's always like, Aziz is in the building? Let's go to another building. This building's got really low standards. So he said that, and I was like, oh, that was nice of him to give me a little shout-out or whatever, but that's when things got terrible. Because right after he said that, he goes, yo, Aziz, go up here and tell that buddy a joke. And I was like, ah, no! This is 4 a.m. on New Year's. I'm out of my head. I'm not in a condition to tell jokes. But he keeps pushing, and he's like, nah, man, come up here and tell that buddy a New Year's Day joke. 
a New Year's Day joke? That's a really specific request. What would that even be? What did one bird say to the other bird? Wow, this year really flew by. Back to Jay-Z, everyone. But he kept pushing this, and he would not stop. And eventually, I just had to go up there, and I do my best to recreate what happened when I took the stage. He passes me the microphone. Um, hello. Okay, uh, one time, um, this restaurant went to my house. <laughs> that didn't happen. That's not, that's not how that one goes. Um, <laughs> <sighs> I'm sleepy. Happy New Year. And I gave the mic back to Jay-Z. And the Jigga Man was not pleased. He grabbed the mic and made this weird face. He's like... And I was like, oh no, I let him down. I gotta like think of something funny. So I thought of something funny to say and I reached back for the mic. And he's like, no! You had your chance to be funny and you missed it. And I was like, oh no, but I get it, because Jay-Z is the smoothest man of all time. His life operates in a different way than mine. He can't comprehend the levels of unsmoothness that go on with me. Like, if Jay-Z slipped on a banana peel, he would just put his other foot on the banana peel and slide to wherever he was going. Man, I got here even faster than I anticipated. Ha <laughs> ha! Thanks, banana peel. My life is the opposite. My life is me spilling mustard on my shirt all the time. Jay-Z is never going to spill mustard on his shirt. Even if mustard was about to land on his shirt, someone else would coincidentally be passing him a hot dog, and the mustard would just go boom, 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 and he grab the hot dog and be like, yo, man, can I get some mustard? Ha <laughs> ha! You about to take a bite of the world's greatest. Ow, 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 ow. Before I leave, I wanted to talk about R. Kelly for a second. <laughs> um, when I was putting together the material for the special, I was thinking, like, you know, I don't need to talk about R. Kelly. I've discussed him in the past. No reason to talk about him anymore. And I wasn't going to do it. But here's the problem. R. Kelly keeps doing amazing things. So, I'm very conflicted about this, but this is what R. Kelly's been up to. Uh, he put out a song uh, last year called Echo. And in the song, he's talking about hooking up with a girl and trying to make her echo. That's weird. Um, I have never been hooking up with a woman and her been like, Aziz, 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 Aziz. Because I would think, oh no, I'm hooking up with a ghost. <laughs> but he put this song out, and I guess what happened is there were some R. Kelly fans that didn't know what an echo is. So what do you do if you're R. Kelly in that situation? What, are you going to post a video online to find the word echo? Yes! That's exactly what he did. And the video went like this. He comes on the screen, he's like, all right, y'all, some of y'all don't know what an echo is. Now, an echo is just basically like, you know, when you stand on top of a mountain and you go, hello, and you hear, hello, 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 hello. That's an echo. End of video. And I said, uh, that's the most amazing thing I've seen in quite a while. How do we get R. Kelly in touch with the Merriam-Webster people in order to start funding for the online R. Kelly video dictionary? That's got to happen at some point in our lifetime. Wouldn't that be amazing type in any word? Cheeseburger. All right, y'all. Some of y'all don't know what a cheeseburger is. You know when you go to McDonald's and you order a cheeseburger? That's a cheeseburger. See, also, related words, veggie burger. You know when you get a cheeseburger and it tastes funny? That's a veggie burger. Or a juice box. 
All right, y'all, some of y'all don't know what a juice box is. Uh, you know when you're making love to a woman and you're holding on to a booty and you're like, oh my God, this is the most amazing booty I've ever held on to in my life. I cannot let go of this booty for whatever reason. I cannot let go. But you get really thirsty, that's when you can reach for your juice box. <laughs> Or, uh, ATM machine. Alright, y'all, some of y'all don't know what an ATM is. You know, uh, ATM machine is, uh, a machine where you can put a card in, you can get money out, you can get your money out, and you can leave. Or, if you got a girl with you, you can put her up against the ATM machine and just grind. She's got her hands on your things, you got your hands on her titties, you about to make love to this nice itty bitty, y'all are fucking by the ATM, fucking by the ATM, fucking by the ATM. <laughs> withdraw, deposit, withdraw, deposit, withdraw, deposit, withdraw, deposit. Damn, girl, I need additional funds. And that's ATM. Thank you guys so much. Thank you very, very much. Thank you so much for coming out. You're a fantastic audience. Good night. Thank you.